Hello and welcome to this Affinity software tutorial which is mainly aimed at beginners in any of the free programs. I'm going to do most of the work in Affinity Photo because I'm, it's the program I feel most comfortable in but I will be sort of comparing it with Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. Now the point of the video was to try and find the tools that you need. Now this sort of came about from a comment I had uh, or someone put into a Facebook group where they were following a tutorial and the person in the tutorial wanted to use the smudge tool and the person following the tutorial couldn't find it and you know, really struggled to find it and we did help that person out but I thought I'd sort of try and help other beginners to sort of find the tools that they need if they're following the tutorial or if they just you know just can't find the tool that they are after. Now the basic um, use interface of like Affinity Photo is pretty much the same in Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher in that like you have like the menus along the top and then you have some options along the top here as well but down the left you have these tools that are available and then on the right you have the studios and the tabs that are available there so have a quick look at say designer you've got tools along the left menus at the top the studios on the right and with publisher again you've got tools on the left menus at the top studios on the right now these are all pretty much um, these programs are pretty much set up in their default state um, some people's videos that you may be following they may have altered theirs around slightly to suit their the way they work um, so if in the video somebody comes over to a menu on and then they use a tool that you can't see on yours is because they've altered their setup. So the actual, I mean, in this case, the person was looking for the smudge tool, which is in a sub menu of one of these tools options on the left here. And the sub menus, you know, which options have sub menus, is they they have a little black triangle in the bottom right of the icon so you have one there one there one there and I think there's more of, uh, of these available in photo than say for example in designer whereas I think there's only a sub menu with the load tool and the text tool and this shape tool so although they sort of look fairly similar they're not all exactly the same the three programs but they are basically built on the same premise so if you click on this little black triangle it will open up the sub menu and as you can see you have you know, a few different options available from that sub menu and if you put the cursor over this option you can see here that it says like it's a rectangular marquee tool and then in brackets it has M that is the keyboard shortcut so if you press M you will get that tool now this is where partly where some of the confusion may arise in that if you look at this option you have the five tools the last one being the freehand selection tool and as we know the keyboard shortcut is M so if you keep an eye on this particular icon here when I press M it will select that tool if I press M again it will pick the next one in that menu M again the next one in the menu and the next one but if I press M again it goes back to the first one it doesn't select the freehand selection tool that may have its own de uh, default keyboard shortcut but although it's in that, that menu it is not selected using the M key 
to cycle through the options in that menu. And the same sort of thing goes for the brush tool. If we look here, the brush tool is B, and you've got the three options paint brush tool, color replacement brush tool, and the pixel tool. Now, the smudge tool that this person was looking for, I believe it's in this menu, yes it is. So you have the blur brush tool, sharpen brush tool, medium brush tool, and the smudge brush tool that the person was looking for. So, if I press B on the keyboard, the option that we're looking for is here. So we keep an eye on that area. So press B, it selects the brush tool. Press B again, this is the second option in that menu. Press B again, you get the next option in the menu. And if I press B again, it drops down here to the smudge brush tool. So although they're in different menus, they are available using the same keyboard shortcut, which does sort of confuse matters slightly, because the other brushes in this menu are not selected using the B keyboard shortcut. In fact, I don't think these are assigned a keyboard shortcut at all at the moment. Um, so how do you go about getting the keyboard shortcuts if you don't know what they are? Now the best place to go is the help files. If you go up to help and you press F1 or and just go from the help menu and use photo help and if you're in design or a publisher it will be there as well and you get the help files so if you just type in shortcut and then press return you've got the customizing keyboard shortcuts and you can even do so and you also got keyboard shortcuts here down the bottom which then lists all the different keyboard shortcuts that are available to use and there's quite a lot of them in photo and I'm guessing pretty much the same in photo and designer but the ones that, that you're sort of looking for is the tools in this particular case anyway it's tools shortcut so as you can see here we got B is assigned to the painting tools cycle and yeah, you know, that is how you can find out where the what the particular shortcuts are for different options. Let me just close that. But if you want to change the shortcuts or make shortcuts for ones that haven't um, got one at the moment, if you come out to the edit menu, and again this is the same in all three of these programs. And come down to preferences one of the options is keyboard shortcuts so and like we said we'd look at in this particular case we're looking for tools so we come down to tools in this menu and then you have these different options and we come down to like the color replacement brush tool as you can see it is currently assigned the letter B now over here you have these little triangle uh, arrows I should say which denote that B is assigned to more than one tool you put the cursor over that it will tell you all the items that are assigned to that tool so I come to the M and you see you've got all the marquee tools now all these blank ones do not have a, a keyboard sh shortcut assigned to them at this present moment in time. So you could just, I'm trying to find one that I might want, well, let's go, no. I, I, I'm not, I don't necessarily need a new shortcut so I'm going to 
going to um, not actually enter one but you enter the letter you want to use and if it's already been used these little arrows will come up and you will know that it's assigned to more than one uh, tool but it's best to find a letter that's not been used before but that's a sort of trial and error and then once you've assigned it and press return you can then close this and that option will then have a keyboard shortcut now there is also a way to get the tool that you want in the toolbar down the side here and if you for that you need to come up to the view menu and click on that and come down to customize tools and you click on that and it will open up this panel which obviously will look different in the different programs because they have different tools and here we have the icons for all the available tools for this particular persona it may be different on the different persona but you can still do the same if you want to you know like the liquify persona or a develop persona or whatever persona you are in in one of the other programs now as you can see like you've got the marquee tool you've got the icon for that with a little drop down menu or you can have the marquee tool if you use that all the time you can just click and drag that icon and put it down here in the tools bar now me personally one that I use quite a lot is the high pass filter tool so if I click on that and drag that down put it down there then that will be constantly in there and I don't have to keep going up to filters to get the high pass tool now these aren't sort of named as such so you'll have to put the cursor over each one to find the one that you want but the smudge brush tool is if I remember rightly is a hand that one there yeah, so I could just click on that, drag it down and put it here. Now, one tool that is very handy, it's not technically a tool I guess, but it is very handy to have, is the colour options which are over here. Now they are not available as it currently stands um, on the left. But if you're, say for example, you're on brushes and you want to keep changing the colour you'd have to keep going sort of brushes, colour and so or swatches and brushes to pick the colour you want for the brush if you don't necessarily want to do that there is a way around that by altering the number of columns from 1 to 2 and then if you then close this option that colour thing will now be here on the left so you, all your tools will be squashed in, well not squashed but sort of placed into two columns and there's now then enough room to have the colour options on the left so you could then be on the brushes or whatever uh, studio option that you're going to use that needs colour and you don't have to keep going back to the colour tab because it will you can select your colour by just double clicking in one of these circles and picking the colour that you want so some people have it set up like that and this is quite a good way to set up um, the tools now looking on the right hand side where like I said we have the studios and all the different tabs obviously programs like designer they have pretty much some you know the same sort of tab system but they may not exactly have the same tabs and same goes for publisher see publishers only got three tabs at the top whereas designers got four and photo has four but you can take some of these tabs away if you never use them or you can add to them if there's a tab that you need and you use quite a lot now to do that 
you can need to come up to again to the view menu and down to studio and you come over to the right it then lists all the available studio tabs all the ones with ticks on are the ones that are currently on the right and the ones that don't have ticks next to them are ones that serif assume that you're not going to use that often now I personally have made keyboard shortcuts for the assets the library and the macros mainly so I don't have to keep constantly have them open um, but if you do select one of these say for example info um, I'm not 100% certain where it will turn up on the right but it will turn up in one of the options I click on info oh it's come down here so info has now been added to the list of tabs that are available in the studios and it's easy enough to remove again just come to studio and click on info to take the tick away and then that has gone so that is basically how you can find the tools that you may see in someone's video um, and just because they may not be in your default setting um, that you've installed doesn't mean that they are, they're not available somewhere and the easiest way to do it is either by altering the how the left hand tools bar looks by adding the tools that you're going to use quite often like I have here with the high pass tool or the color options here on the left leaving you free to switch between the tabs and the toolbars for getting the colors and just to prove that this sort of does work with say designer um, again you've got the view menu customize tools and you have the same option here where you can make spread them into two columns and when you close that the color option is available here in the toolbar but yeah so the, the more rows that you have these columns in it reduces the image size that is available to work with well not the image size but the, the viewable image size um, and similarly you can come up to in publisher again you've got customized tools so you've got all the tools that are available that you can drag down and put on the tools bar here or again no, you could change the number of columns I won't bother in this particular case because they don't change color so much with publisher because mainly most of it is text and the, so I leave that as it is but again from the views menu you have the studio tab in publisher and you can decide which studio tabs you have or don't have and the same goes for designer view studio and then you have the options now basically photo designer and publisher they all pretty much look the same and they pretty much work in the same way in the you know the various tools may be different but the way you access them is pretty much the same so that's pretty much it really um, I hope this has helped someone um, but if you do have a problem you know, just drop me a line or you know a message on this video and if I can help you find the tool you're looking for I will try and help you out so thank you for watching and goodbye